with Sasha Banks and Naomi reportedly upset with WWE for months prior to their recent walkout and more. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for May 17th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With him teasing a move to WWE when his contract for AEW expires in 2024, MJF told Rasslin just who he'd like to face off against. By the way, as I've discussed before, there's no bigger Roman Reigns fan than me. I also love what Seth Rollins is doing. I'd imagine, I think me and him would have a tremendous match, yeah. I think it would be a friendly competition. I also, I would love to wrestle Seth Rollins. I would love to wrestle The Miz. There are a lot of guys over there. Talk about the return of Cody Rhodes to WWE, MJF said, yeah, that's my best friend, the roller chodester, Cody Rhodes. Me and Cody, we still talk sometimes to this day. I love that guy. Also, Cody. God, Cody Rhodes is a sweetheart. He texted my parents and he offered them tickets for the Long Island show at SmackDown. They couldn't go. They were busy, but it was very sweet of him to do. Also, have you seen his baby? What a cute bae. Oh my gosh. Reacting to a story from Hardcore Holly's book, which is about JBL attempting to bully Steve Blackman and getting beat up and apologizing, Buff Bagwell would take a shot at the former WWE champion, saying, Bradshaw attempted to end my career in a dark segment on SmackDown. I'm glad he's grown up from those days. JBL replied, writing, Buff, this is simply not true. It was a powerbomb, a called spot, and I landed you flat, which is safe. No different from anyone else I've powerbombed back in the day. Stiff, yes. Dangerous, no. This is the first I've heard of this. Not doubting what you thought but zero intent to injure. Buff would then write, I appreciate that. You know how it goes. People talk and I was dumb enough to listen. And the two would then wish each other well. With rumors of Rey Mysterio wanting to take a step back from wrestling and have his son Dominic start a singles career, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that WWE is not ready for the two to split. Even when Aaliyah was around, when they were doing the tension between Rey and Dominic all the time, and then they just drop the ball every single time and just forget about it and everything. They probably set up the split like three or four times. I know that they were told this time when Rey took the time off to get the stem cell and they did the injury angle with Dominic that, you know, we're going to have Dominic go on his own which they've said before that they were going to do that. But the problem is that Dominic on his own is going to be dead. Rey will always be over because he's Rey Mysterio, but I don't know that they will ever really do anything with him because between the size and the age, people will always pop for him. They can always do something with him, but it's like, do you really think that they're going to have Rey beat Veer Mahan? I mean, I don't anticipate they are. Rey's job is to be the underdog and fight gallantly and lose to these guys. That's the role they have him in, and that's just the deal. Following the Anything Goes bout in AEW between Jeff Hardy and Darby Allen, where Allen landed from the top of the ladder onto steel chairs, Booker T expressed concern for the young star in his Hall of Fame podcast. It will be a whole lot more stuff happening in this wrestling business. You just have to see something like that, you know, more power to those guys for going out there and doing that and having a courage to actually do it. But Darby Allen really will become a cripple by the time he turns 40 years old. Bottom line, he would not be able to walk. He would have so much surgery done on his body by the time he turns 40, it's not going to be funny, and God bless him for putting his body on the line for the business. With Triple H previously announcing his retirement from in-ring action due to having a defibrillator installed in his chest, it seems he and Kevin Owens were expecting to have a match against each other. On Talk Sport, KO revealed, I think I echo what everyone has said. It's very unfortunate in the way Triple H didn't get to retire in the ring, but he made the right decision for himself and his family, so that's the right decision. It's a good decision. Selfishly, I wish I would have had the chance to wrestle him, and he and I talked about that before. I think we both assumed that eventually it was going to happen. It won't be able to happen, but in the grand scheme of things, who cares, you know?
on Monday Night Raw, fans were made aware just when they'd see Cody Rhodes thanks to WWE's Cody Rhodes Countdown, as Meltzer explained on Wrestling Observer Radio why this was done. It worked in week one, so you're going to do it again and with the same guy. Obviously, they believe of the guys they have that the one who is the most valuable to focus on to save our three is Cody Rhodes, because they've put him in there two weeks in a row. Ahead of his third match against Seth Rollins, Cody revealed to Sports Illustrated that he is the best pro wrestler. I think I'm the best wrestler in the world, and I think it's by a large margin. That upsets a lot of people, but I don't mean it to draw ire. This is all I do. I'm not in charge. I'm here to hone my craft, build my body, and win matches. Every week, I have to be better. That's the ultimate clarity for me. While they were supposed to be a part of the main event of Raw and Six Pack Challenge, the women's tag team champions Naomi and Sasha Banks walked out on the show and handed in their title belts. They were reportedly frustrated with creative, as Fightful clarified a report on the two being uncomfortable in the ring with Becky Lynch and Asuka. Those close to the situation said that Naomi and Sasha Banks didn't claim that they didn't want to work with Becky Lynch and Asuka, though that was implied in WWE statements, and those were the two women referenced. Instead, we're told that Sasha Banks and Naomi were angling to work with Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. The town themselves hadn't heard that Sasha and Naomi considered anyone unsafe until the statement was released. WWE talent also got the statement in their internal talent relations app. We're told that Sasha Banks and Naomi's issues largely were concerns about the direction of their tag team and the division as a whole. It was also said that for the six-pack challenge, the working plan with the match was for Naomi to pin Nikki A.S.H., not Naomi pinning Sasha Banks as speculated. Now, a Twitter user, Adidas underscore head 88, who was followed by Naomi and appears to be a friend of hers, has revealed that the two have been upset with WWE for months. You were approached in February as being put in a tag team after both being promised big feuds at WrestleMania. You bite the bullet and put everything you got into being a team. It works, you get over, when the titles at WrestleMania become merch pushers. Five weeks into your reign, you show up to live TV and ready to work. You were told you will be in the main event. You were happy. You both are then told that one of you will be going over from pinning the other. You have questions why that decision was made and how it helps y'all. You request a meeting with your boss to discuss it. Your boss takes the meeting and everything is actually going well. He understands your concerns. The meeting ends well and the match is told to be reconstructed. For some reason, producers get mad about it. You then ask, with one of your members going over, what happens to your titles? You were told basically that you will just be carrying the belts. They want to use both of you to help both women's champions get more over. Bianca versus Naomi, Sasha versus Ronda. Neither one of you will win the solo titles and you won't defend your tag titles until money in the bank. You ask for another meeting with your boss, but this time you were being called spoiled. A producer walks away screaming. He comes back and tells both of you to fix your attitudes. Y'all have a brief meeting amongst yourselves and decide to stand up for yourselves. You go to another boss and make it clear you just have concerns. You ask, why are we even in the match and why aren't other women in it? You ask why your titles have no stories for two months. Again, you are met with fix your attitudes. So after one final meeting with yourselves and asking others, you make the ultimate ultimate decision as a team. It sat on one side as trying to create a messed up narrative. Also, it was asked why were Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop in the match instead of starting their program tonight. Naomi nor Sasha talked down about being in the ring with either one. I don't know how that got flipped. Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio that there is more to this, claiming the WWE chairman did not back down from them. A lot of this is just speculative right now. They left. It's not a work. As far as what happens next, they sent out a release and didn't say anything didn't indicate anything about what was going on, other than clearly management was upset. There was a situation. I do know that whatever it was, they went to Vince, and Vince did not back down, which they did not put in the release. Vince did not agree to what they were asking, and that led them walking out during the show, which is kind of a no-no. But again, look, if the Kota Ibushi stuff can be smoothed over, I've seen a lot worse get smoothed over. Speaking of Sasha Banks, William Regal recalled on the sessions telling Vince McMahon that if Banks did not work out for WWE, that he could fire him. There's only four people that I have ever gone to Mr. McMahon or to Triple H with whom I have said I put my reputation on. I put my job on the line once for Sasha Banks. She was somebody I went because I knew her, and my first thing on the job was to hire this lady. I said, if it doesn't work out, you can fire me. She's not one of them. That was a separate thing.
after being released by WWE for a picture of him with a Hitler stash doing a Nazi salute, former NXT Tag Team Champion Nash Carter took to social media to apologize for this, writing, No words can truly describe how ashamed and apologetic I am for my conduct in the photograph. There is no excuse for such behavior, and I take full responsibility for my actions and ask for forgiveness. This picture was taken in 2015, a time when I was uneducated on the topic and therefore didn't understand the magnitude of how hurtful it was. In 2020, someone was trying to extort me by threatening to post it on social media. I sent it to my wife to discuss the situation. Apparently, she kept it, and then decided in retaliation for the filing of the divorce to post it to social media. Regardless how the photograph came to light, there is still no excuse for my actions. Over the past month, I have taken time to reflect on my conduct, to which I express my utmost remorse and regret. I have spent time off social media to refresh and re-educate myself about the horrors of the Holocaust. I truly do hope that this situation will teach and bring awareness to the horrific tragedy that took place, so that something like this will never happen again. I can assure you that this is not who I am or what I represent as a human being, and I feel it is never too late to educate and better yourself. If you were ever in the Orlando, Maitland area, take some time to visit the Holocaust Memorial Research and Education Center of Florida, where you can learn about the history and depth of what took place. It was an incredibly eye-opening and impactful experience that teaches the importance of this history. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.